Hey Fred, I just uh, emailed you a couple of uh, articles here to read, and uh, the first one was a radio interview by uh, Bruce Lipton. I know we both listened to it. Uh, what were your comments on what uh, uh, Dr. Lipton said? Well, I certainly believe in epigenetics and genetic expression. I mean, I've been counseling people for over 40 years, and I've known all along, so many people have come to me over the years, and they kind of were doubtful about whether lifestyle change could really help them because they said that their grandmother or their grandfather had this problem and their aunt had this problem and uh, their cousin had this problem. And in so many of the cases, I saw the lifestyle change affect them just as well as it affected anybody else. I believe the, uh, the lifestyle change is a very, very important part of your genetic expression. The thoughts you entertain, you know, your spiritual beliefs, the thoughts you entertain uh, are definitely triggering your, um, the switches or the markers outside the cellular membrane to have an effect on the DNA. Remember that the DNA is not the brain of the cell. The membrane, the switches and markers outside the, the membrane, that's why they call it epigenetics from the outside, is affected by your diet, the thoughts you entertain, the chemicals in your environment, anything around you uh, is going to have an effect on you. So many people I see uh, have what's called psychosomatically induced disorders, and I believe that all has to do with epigenetics. They actually become sick from being very negative or having anxiety, fears and phobias and all of the problems that we have caused by stress in our society. So I also use other aspects, kinesiology, clinical hypnosis to help people change the way they view the world, the effect that their thinking, their diet is having on their genetic expression. So I think we're blessed to uh, be exposed to guys like uh, Bruce Lipton and there's so many other people out there that are not getting the recognition that are, uh, you know, coming to the same conclusions. Uh, Dr. Uh, Stephen uh, Mayer, who's fabulous wrote a fabulous book on the case for intelligent design, which I think was just absolutely brilliant. I believe that over the years. I certainly believe that um, uh, we were designed, genetic expression was designed by our creator, and it's part of our healing process. It's been there since the very beginning. We're just coming to find this out now, and I can only imagine what the, uh, the future is going to hold for the, for the uh, young people today and the next generation after that. They're going to be doing so many things that are dynamic. I believe that uh, genetic expression is going to be the answer to, to uh, helping people have cancer and serious uh, degenerative disease. It's going to be part of the, the healing aspects of the future. Thank you, Fred. That was really good. And uh, this, the second, second piece of this uh, video I would like you to talk about is the, uh, the CDC's report on the H1N1 flu. They say it's affecting more children and younger adults than older adults, which is kind of different than how it would normally be faced. But what was talked about in the, in the transcript uh, was the relationship about how also American Indians and Aust um, uh, Alaska Natives are also being affected highly. And then it was reported and asked a question that, is there any linkage to the Aboriginal people? who basically have a lot of diabetes and alcoholism and asthma, as do American Indians, as well as Alaska Natives when they switched over their lifestyle. Now, also, the, um, the uh, representative for the CDC talked about a, a possible nutritional component that's associated with children if that is really affecting them more so than not. So can you speak epigenetically on all these comments that I've just read to you, please? Well, I, I think that's um, um, a multi-variable uh, type of a thing, you know. I honestly believe that um, when you're living the right type of a lifestyle, you have unbelievable immunity. Just uh, using myself, if I might use myself as an example, because I've lived this type of a lifestyle, you know, where I have my spiritual beliefs and I have a positive uh, uh, mental attitude and I'm out in the fresh air all the time, well, I've never had the flu that I can remember in the last uh, 50 years. I've never gotten the flu. And uh, I don't, I'm not a, a firm believer in uh, uh, flu shots, of course, but uh, I believe that the answer really is in 
to educate the people, to make them aware of your lifestyle, uh, uh, the cleanliness of your body. You're not providing environment for bacteria uh, uh, proliferation that you, 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 you'll be sick very, very rarely. When we were over in Australia, I saw what, you know, we met these Aboriginal elders. I saw what, uh, what happened to the Aboriginal people where they were really unbelievably healthy people. They were living a certain type of a life spiritually and the food that we were eating for probably 10,000 years and all of a sudden uh, we went in there to save them and bring them out into to the civilized world and what we actually did, we, we ruined their culture. That's what's called transgenerational disorder. There's a, a, not only a, um, a cultural shock for what was done to them, just like the American Indian, but there's also a scientific impact on what takes place when somebody's been doing something consistently. They were living in certain parameters for thousands and thousands of years, and you shock them into this new um, modern way of thinking as far as food is concerned. And even with their spiritual beliefs, we went out there and thought we were going to take them, you know, and make them modern, take heathens and make modern men and women out of them, which turned out to be a disaster. Same thing happened to the American Indians. And it's transgenerational disorder. Epigenetics and genetic expression has tremendous amount to do with, with that. And I personally believe that I'm looking forward to the opportunity to going back to Australia. And I know we can reverse for people that are Aboriginal people that are, are willing participants in their own recovery to enable them to help them sustain their cultural beliefs. But we are able to reverse transgenerational disorder through lifestyle change by the correct type of diet. If you understand what happens, and I believe I do, I do and I'm looking for the opportunity to go back and help those people, I believe that we could solve a lot of problems that they're having. And I believe this message should go out to a lot of different uh, cultures in the world that are being modernized and taken out of their uh, practice the way they lived for thousands of years. I believe that's a mistake. And this modern life that we, we're living in this country, obviously, as far as food is concerned and the chemicals that are being put on our food, remember, the chemicals that are putting on our food uh, are not really working that well. We're able to feed more people. Maybe economically it's working that well, but it's a known fact that the pesticides and all the things that are being used have the same effect as estrogen in the male and the female body. So we got to get back to what, the, to what nature meant us to do. The human body is really governed by natural law. It's, it's very specific things, just like the law of gravity. You don't want to jump out of a plane without a parachute. Uh, the same thing with food. You want to eat food that's perfectly compatible on a cellular level with the human organism. Then you'll have a fabulous uh, healthy life. And you don't have to be some, uh, you know, some kind of an extremist. There are many different interpretations of what a healthy diet is. A healthy diet commences with what you leave out. And you have, you have leeway to be able to eat a healthy diet, live a very, very long time. I've seen it. I've done it with many different types of people. I do it myself with a radical type of diet, a raw diet. That works excellently if it's done correctly. And you can also, you don't have to eat, of course, I want to emphasize, as I've been saying for the last 40 years, with my intermediate level diet, you do not have to eat all raw to be a healthy person. Anybody that tells you you have to eat all raw to be a healthy person, um, I would just look at a statement like that with common sense because there's millions of people all over the world in different cultures that don't eat all raw and some of them are very healthy, living beyond 100 years. So you have to take a second look at that. I plan on speaking about that more in the future. I want to, I'm going to come up with some documented evidence to... Uh, substantiate the points that we're always making. So, thank you very much. Great, Fred. Thanks for the comments, and don't forget to check out uh, our blog on www.fredbishyforhealth.com.